Hello, you too. How you doing? Uh, today I want to share a story that happened to me uh, a few years ago. And the thing is, how much do you need to give up? Um, I'm not. I don't used to give up really easy. I need a lot, a lot of stuff going on in order for me to kind of quit. But even then. I'm not an easy quitter but a couple years ago I had a friend of mine that called me one time he was opening a restaurant in a mall so he said hey Alex you know I need um, I'm gonna open my restaurant in a few days but before I open I wanna check the air conditioner and make sure it was that it, that it is ready it was in the middle of the summertime, so I asked him, do you do you try to start it up? No, I said, no, I, I did it because I just moved and we're doing the remodelation and all that, so I never had the chance to check it out. So yeah, no problem. So I I don't remember, this happened years ago, so I don't have everything really, really clear in my mind. I'm coming back to the mall and I said, yeah, just uh, let me... Uh, let me go find your unit. Now, his restaurant, he was in the first floor. He got an air handler, a big air handler above the ceiling. Now, in order to reach that, you need an eight foot ladder to move the tiles and then move that ladder and get another ladder to reach the air handler. It was about 15, 17 feet in the air. So it was very difficult access to the unit. So here I go, I'm gonna try to make this short because this, the whole thing, it took days, days, believe me. So I found the air handler and uh, I said, well, let me go find the, uh, the condensing unit. Go up on a roof, they got millions of condensing units not labeled. No way for me to find out which one is mine because the air handler is in the first floor, two floors up, that's where the uh, the condensing unit is. And looking, 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 can I find it, can I find it? The problem is about, I was by myself. So I thought, well, let's do something. Let's turn it on so I can find the, uh, the condensing unit. So I told my friend, uh, do you know where the thermostat is? Say, well, I, that's, that's what I got. And I look at it, and it's a sensor. Previously, they used to have a management company who used to control the unit remotely, so there is no thermostat. So look, we need to return and get the thermostat, and we go from there. Finally, we got there, and I'm just making this short. We got the thermostat, go up on a roof, turn it on I can hear the air handler running in the meantime just keep this in mind the guy is counting the days because he needs to open He's in the middle of the summertime and we need air conditioning so he's just counting the days he got in that time I believe one or two more weeks and he have to be open so I can hear the air handler so let me go up on a roof no condensing unit running god damn it man why so I said look there's no way I can I, I cannot find it. There is no label for your system and nobody knows anything because it used to be another restaurant before you and it was controlled by a management company. So I need to come with someone and we need to trace it out somehow. Return it again. Got a friend of mine, so what we've been doing is hitting the pipes and try to locate it. Finally, we locate the condensing unit. Well, I got it, finally. Let's find out why it's not coming on. It is calling for cooling. It's an old equipment, very old equipment. It's calling for cooling. Put my gauges and it's empty. No refrigerant, two stages. So, oh God. Say, look man, your system is empty. So yeah, yeah, it's empty. So we need to do a leak test. So well, just make sure that everything is fine. Coming back, we got the refrigerant. 
said, so, well, let me try to do a leak test because if he lost the whole charge, it's probably because uh, it's got to be a decent leak somewhere. So I just started shooting uh, nitrogen and I got my friend in the air hand and I told him just, you know, from that point on, every time I went back, I got one of my friends with me. So I told my friend, just stay in the air handler. If you hear something, let me know. I'm shooting nitrogen, and he calls me back. Alex, I can hear something. All right, shut the nitrogen off. Going downstairs, I found the TXV, and it's leaking there. I grab my flashlight. They replaced the TXV, another previous company, and they had a leak, but they couldn't solder, or they couldn't brace it, because the size of the TXV was pretty big. So they had a really bad time trying to, to brace that TXV. So what they did is they put epoxy to stop the leak. They put epoxy, I never saw anything like that. So I don't know how bad the TXV was. So I told my friend, look, these people probably burn out your TXV trying to get it together because it was black, black, black. So. Let's get another TXB for you, you know, just play safe. Coming back, I got the TXB. I fight and fight for hours until I got it. Got it, done. All right. So my friend again, stay here. I'm gonna shoot nitrogen again. Shoot nitrogen, check it out, no leaks in the TXB. Good. Same, uh, I told my friend, so look, just spray some bubbles in the TXB and let me know if you got any bubbles. No, everything is good, all right. Look at my gauges. Pressure is dropping, dropping, dropping in really fast. So, man, something is. Are you sure that it's not? No. Do you hear something downstairs? No, nothing over here. And I'm spraying bubbles in the TXB. Everything is good. No bubbles, nothing. So, but my pressure is dropping like, like the pipe is cracked or the pipe is wide open. Some the the uh, nitrogen is going somewhere. Then I shut the nitrogen. I can hear the pssst right in the roof where the lines it is going through the roof so oh, god damn it this is a white roof it's not black membrane so this is like the white uh, I don't know what material it is but it's the white stuff and I can hear where the line set going through the roof is say look I told my friend the owner of the restaurant look there is another leak where the uh, piping is so we need to uh, get permission from the mall because we need to open the pocket where the airlines are go through. Finally, we got the permission from the mall. We coming back. We open it up. They had a leak, and again because they I don't know why they couldn't brace it or probably they called the wrong company. They couldn't brace the crack. What they did is they put a coupling and they again put epoxy. They had epoxy on a coupling. It was unreal. I never had anything like that in my life. So cut everything, cut everything out, put another piece, couplings, brace all together, pressure tested, done. Good. No more leaks, pressure stable. I let it stay for a day. Next day I came back, pressure beautiful. No leaks, nothing. So alright, good. So uh let's go from there. Next day, coming. I'm saying next day. I don't know how many days goes by, because I was working for my company and for my friend. It was crazy. So, if I remember right, I went back. Now, remove all the uh, nitrogen and start the vacuum. Say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the system stay for a good time, so I can have a really nice vacuum. Because I have the line set. I believe it was an inch and an eighth suction line going down and a 7 8 coming back three floors so it was a pretty decent uh system so put it in a vacuum in the meantime oh let's you know what let's check everything else make sure that everything is good checking the contactors uh, let me check the compressor one compressor is good checking the other compressor round it at this point this friend of mine says, look, Alex, I cannot spend any more money. See? And I feel so, so bad. I said, look, the compressor is dead. Are you kidding me? No, it is dead. It's dead. The compressor is dead. It's grounded. And not even that open wideness. 
is the took a couple days I couldn't charge it because that was the first stage second stage it was alright so I have to reopen the system again so I stopped the vacuum say look this, uh, we need to get the compressor man we need to get it couple days goes by I believe my company bought the compressor for him and I went back on a, back with my friend, with not, not the restaurant, but another friend who helped me to bring the compressor up on a roof, heavy as hell. Remove the old one, get the new one in, pressure tested again, done, good, put a nice, nice, nice vacuum. And uh, then the next day I went back, said, well, let's charge it up. And I still have my friend, which is, was my helper in that time. First time that he was working for me. So well, now everything is good. Let's charge it up. Start charging, 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 charging. So we good. Well, let's turn one of the compressor on. Turn on the unit. It was running no problem for a few minutes. And it, remember, it was a very old equipment, very old condensing unit. I told the guy since the beginning when we start everything. Everything looks very, very old. My suggestion, replace the whole system, but you know, he didn't have the money to spend. Plus the restaurant needs to be open right away. At that point, I believe we got two or three more days and that's it. So he said, well, I don't have money and I don't have the time, probably in the future someday. So I need this running now. So. I got some of the charge already in the system by vacuum. So I started charging it, I got the compressor running, started charging. And I remember I got my fr a friend of mine helping me for the first time, you know. And the condenser coil blew off one of the U-tubes. And the whole charge blew off the unit. I got a giant cloud of refrigerant above me freaking mess I just jumped because it was kind of an explosion you know when it blew so my friend just jumped jumped on one side of the unit I jumped to the other side and my friend you know he got scared bad bad me too you know I never I never saw a YouTube you know exploding like that I never saw it that you know that kind of explosion shut the refrigerator in and <laughs> all the refrigerant going in the air at that point you know it's one of the uh, moments when you realize you have to stop you have to stop and and that's probably one of the probably few few times I said that's it that's enough I called my friend and said look your unit just blew off one of the U-tubes in the uh, condenser coil charging and the uh, service in this equipment is dangerous I cannot take this anymore you have to let it go or find someone else or do what I said replace the whole system I know you don't have time but it's not safe and I'm not, I'm not touching this equipment anymore in the meantime my friend went downstairs and, I, and he talked to the uh, mall company and get bunches bunch of uh, paper towels so we clean the whole roof that's another hour just cleaning the mess the oil you can imagine cleaning all that and I you know keep asking my friend man you feel all right so yeah I'm just scared you know he was shaking he was shaking you know I got oil all over me my friend too I feel bad because my friend you know my helper my friend uh, first time working with me just trying to help me you know like put put him on danger and I feel bad also because I'm trying to get this system running for my friend you know the owner of the restaurant and I couldn't you know and I have to ending quitting I feel like I feel like shit at this point and um, cleaning the roof my friend shows up, the mall, uh, one of the mall maintenance guys shows up and I show him, look, the, the, the coil is so old, just blew off the, uh, one of the tools. 
so we lost the whole charge. I'm not touching it anymore. And I told him, look, this is dangerous. I don't want to touch it. it can, anything else can happen at this point. Uh, I'm guessing that too many people has been touching this equipment, you know, with the uh, with the epoxy thing I show him, the uh, compressor dead, multiple leaks everywhere, you know, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. So I told him, I'm, I'm very sorry, man, but I'm not, that's it. I'm not going anymore with this. Uh, clean up on the roof, leaving for the day. And I remember that feeling, man, like if it is today. I feel really bad, uh, frustrated, probably is the right word, um, the right word for it. thinking on that for days and days and days feeling bad because my friends feeling bad because I couldn't get it done because I ended quitting and I hate to quit but how much do you need to quit you know that's how much it took me that time to quit it's a uh, it's a very bad uh, feeling I don't know if I don't know how many of you guys been through stuff like that, but it's a bad feeling. It's a learning experience, I'm pretty much sure, but it's not. Um, it's not funny. <clears throat> so that's what happened. I would like to hear from you, uh, your personal experience and um, how you deal with it. All right, guys. Again, thank you for all your support to the channel. Thank you for listening. And um, this is not only my story. I know in the comments I'm gonna have a bunch of different stories, and that's what I like sharing our stories. You know, uh, and what do you get to get it done? What do you need to get it done? And what you did to get it done, or what it happens that you couldn't? But that's that's all about sharing our stories. Thank you for taking your time and write down whatever you need to write down and thank you very much for your time. See you later.